perhaps uh, we're turning the corner in what we know about the relationship between what we eat and our health. In the old way of thinking, the idea was, well, I eat a bad food, like high cholesterol, bacon, sausage, things like that. And I get a disease, like a high cholesterol level or a heart attack. And, and that's all true. That's, that's just as important as it ever was. But we've learned something else. And that is that virtually everything in our body is controlled by hormones, uh, estrogen and testosterone. <clears throat> they control our reproductive function, of course, but also how we feel from day to day. Insulin is a hormone that controls our blood sugar, and that has an enormous influence throughout our body. Our thyroid gland makes thyroid hormone, and there are many others. But did you know that foods allow us to control our hormones and that sometimes if the foods aren't chosen very carefully, they can push our hormones in the wrong direction. So the idea is the reason I called my latest book, Your Body in Balance, is that hormones can be dangerous if they're at too low of a level or too high of a level. And they can also be, they are obviously essential to life if they're in the right spot. So that's what we want to do. All right, let me walk you through it. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with insulin. Now, a little backstory. Uh, I grew up in North Dakota. My whole family was in the cattle business. <laughs> my whole, my uh, grandpa and his father, my uncles and cousins and everybody. And my father grew up in the cattle business, but he did not care for it. And he left the cattle business and went to medical school and became the diabetes expert for Fargo. And in fact, all of Eastern North Dakota and Western Minnesota, my father really was the guy uh, who, who treated people with diabetes. However, I never once heard him say that anybody with diabetes got better because the whole idea was let's use insulin to try to get blood sugar down to where it ought to be and try to encourage people to lose weight if that could help, but they didn't really get very far. And so the, the whole goal of that time wasn't to, to make the disease go away. That wasn't in the mindset. The whole goal was just to slow the decline, slow the, the damage, slow the complications like blindness or heart disease or amputations. However, we've learned something very surprising. Let me share it with you. Okay, so I want to start with, with the first hormone is insulin. Insulin, as you know, has the job of getting blood sugar, the sugar in the blood to go into your cells so it can power you. So I want to walk you through how this works. And then I want to show you how we can control it in surprising ways and how many people are letting it really get off the scales in the wrong way. Okay, so this big purple oval that you see, that is a muscle cell a cell in your body. And that cell, let's call it a muscle cell, it needs sugar to function. Sugar is its fuel. So glucose is the sugar and the, the glucose is all around the cell. It's in the blood. But to work, it needs to get inside the cell. But you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't get through. The glucose molecules can't get through the cell membrane. So we have a key and the key is insulin. And that insulin key arrives at the surface of the cell, just like a key in a lock. And it signals little doors to open, little channels to open. I'm being a little simplistic here, but you get the idea. Uh, and that allows glucose to come into the cell, okay? So insulin is a key that admits glucose. Great. So what could go wrong? I mean, why do people have high blood sugar? How do they end up with diabetes? Well, with type 2 diabetes, it starts with this and this. These, when I was a kid growing up, these were all the kinds of things that were in my diet, and they may still be in the diets of a whole lot of other people. All these foods have fat in them, meat products, oils. They have a lot of fat. So what? Fat particles build up inside the cell. These are, this is not a huge amount of fat say under your skin or around your tummy or around your waistline. This is microscopic, microscopic fat particles inside your muscle cells. And when fat particles build up inside the cell, it causes a condition called insulin resistance. The cell is filled with fat. And so now insulin doesn't work very well. The insulin key still, is atta still attaches. It's there parking at the surface of the cell, but it's not working. You see that? The glucose molecules can't get inside the cell. Nothing's going right. Hmm. Insulin resistance is caused by fatty foods getting fat inside the cell. What do I do? Well, what if I stop eating animal products? 
In fact, there won't be any animal fat in my diet anymore. In fact, what if I go another step? What if I keep oily foods in general really low? Then the fat starts to dissipate. The fat comes out of your muscle cells and also out of your liver cells. By the way, doctors hate words like fat because it has only three letters. So we call it intramyocellular lipid, but that's just fat inside your muscle cells. And it starts to go away. Isn't that nice? And so now the key works again. So insulin resistance is replaced by insulin sensitivity. And now the glucose goes into the cell where it belongs and everybody's doing great. Okay, super. So what we've learned is that we can make insulin work more poorly by eating fatty things, especially animal fat, saturated fat. But we can make it work better by getting these things out of our diet because that pulls the fat out of our cells. And now the cell is not encumbered with a lot of fat and the insulin key works again. Okay, now let me back. That, that's, the, that's the concept. That's the mechanism. But now let's back up. And I want to show you to the research that led to this surprising new way of viewing things. I want to go back to 1996. Let's go to Yale University, New Haven, Connecticut. Michael Roden and his colleagues working with Jerry Shulman and Kit Peterson and their, their, their experts in New Haven. They did a lipid infusion. What I mean is uh, you, you bring in volunteers and you start an IV line in a vein and you put lipids, fat, into their bloodstream. And then you watch what happens. And what happens was their insulin sensitivity starts to decline. The more you put lipid into their blood vessels, the more their insulin sensitivity uh, starts to decline, their insulin resistance builds up. What's important about this is this didn't occur over weeks or months or years. We think about, think about insulin resistance as taking years to develop. You could develop it in one day. You could develop it in a matter of just a few hours. Okay, so now let's take the next step. If a lipid infusion will do it, what if I eat a hamburger? Or what if I eat a steak or I eat some, something else really greasy? Will that do it? So Michael Roden's team, they're now in Germany, uh, decided to test palm oil. And they put palm oil in a single meal. Now it was a lot, but it was not out of the range of what people would eat in a, in a typical day. But what they showed is yes, Palm oil in a single meal will reduce insulin uh, sensitivity. By the way, if, if you have a photo strip on the right side of your screen, you might just minimize that or drag it out of the way. I want to make sure you see this. Okay, so palm oil, as you probably know, is bad fat. It's high, very high in saturated fat. I would encourage you to avoid it completely. So let's look at what people think of as a healthier oil. Let's look at canola oil. It's not so much saturated fat. It's more monounsaturated fat, but they've got more or less the same result. Not quite as bad. But although saturated fat seems to cause more insulin resistance, probably any kind of fat can contribute to it. Okay, so if I want to make insulin work better, you get the fat out of the diet. And if one does this, what you can see is that not only does insulin resistance improve, diabetes improves. In our research team, we found that A1C, the marker of blood sugar control, improved three times more with a low-fat vegan diet than with the best current diet. It's the, really the way to go. And now we know why. You're getting the animal fat out of your diet. You're keeping vegetable oils low too. The fat comes out of your cells and your insulin can now work again. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, hormone number two.